In 1957, the Soviets held their annual Victory Day Parade on Red Square, celebrating the defeat of Nazi Germany in the Great Patriotic War. At this parade, foreign journalists and photographers were shown a new type of Soviet vehicle, one with a 20-meter-long barrel on the chassis of a T-10 heavy tank. At the time, many thought that this new weapon was a fake, but this vehicle was not a fake one. It was named the 2B-1 Oka, a 420 mm 16.5 inch gun sat on top of an overburdened chassis, originally intended for the T-10. After World War II, nuclear weapons were the new thing. Every nation was developing them and new tactics for their use. Even thought they were seen as city-destroying weapons, it was quickly realized that smaller versions could have a significant impact on the battlefield, those are what we know today as tactical nuclear weapons. But in the 50s before missile technology had developed delivering a nuclear weapon was a difficult task. The US had the M65 atomic cannon, which was a 280mm artillery piece capable of firing a 15 kiloton nuclear shell up at a range of 20 miles. This weapon had entered service in 1955 and it was deployed to Europe to be ready for the next conflict with the USSR. The USSR seeing this weapon started developing a similar cannon. The weapon had to be mobile and capable of firing a nuclear shell to a range of 30 miles, 45 kilometers. This is how the 2B1 Oka was born. It was named after the Oka River in Russia. It is made out of a tank chassis and an immense 420 mm, 16.5 inch, 20 meter, 66 feet long gun. The chassis was a highly modified T-10 hull developed at the Kirov plant in Leningrad. Visually, the hull appears to be reversed from the standard T-10 with the engine, transmission and drive sprockets at the front of the 2B1. To help deal with the immense recoil, the rearmost road wheels were heavily reinforced. It was powered by a turbocharged V12 diesel engine that developed 750 horsepower. However, its weight of 55 tons and impractical proportions meant that it had terrible mobility. In action, the 2B1 was operated by a large crew, but on the move it was operated only by a driver. The 420mm gun of the 2B1 was bigger than the main armaments of the Iowa-class battleships, which carried 406mm 16-inch guns. It could fire a 750 kg shell out to a range of 27 miles. This was especially convenient for nuclear rounds, as it put crews at a safe distance from the detonation. Shells were loaded into the breach via a crane, giving it a lightning-fast rate of fire of one round every five minutes. It could elevate up 75 degrees, but it lacked any traverse, side-to-side, -side, movement whatsoever, requiring the entire vehicle to move when aiming. Engineers tried to address this with a specialist transmission that allowed more precise movements for fine laying of the gun. It had large shock absorbers, but even with these and the reinforced suspension, the 2B1 was still thrown around by the brutal recoil of the gun. The 2B1 rolled back 5 meters when fired. In addition to this, the recoil tore the gearbox from its mountings and wrecked the suspension. Almost every component was pushed to its limits by the violent recoil. This caused the 2B1 to be very unreliable. It was very difficult to operate and the Soviet logistics had a hard time to operate and transport the vehicle. Engineers were simply unable to get the vehicle to a point where it could survive firing its own gun. After the development of missiles and due to all the problems after just three years the 2B1 was pulled from the Soviet army.